So we're going to be talking about um, Enterprise UX, and uh, it's my contention that there's a revolution going on in Enterprise UX. We're going to talk about that. But here's how I'd like to start this bit. Let me see if this works. Hi, I'm Greg, and I work in UX. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi. So is it just me, or is coming to uh, Madison UX, or any UX conference for that matter, uh, like the best support group in the world? Am I right? Am I right? So no matter who you are, if you've worked in any time in, in user experience, you have stories to tell, right? You have opportunities. You have CEO buttons, right, that have swooped in at the last minute. You've had to make concessions um, with things that you thought you would never do. Um, but you've done them in, in the name of um, just sheer exhaustion a lot of times. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, is is why working in enterprise uh, UX doesn't suck. But so, real quick show of hands, has, did anybody by chance go to the uh, San Antonio conference for enterprise UX? Nobody? Okay, that's okay. Um, does anybody work in enterprise UX? Okay, I knew it, I knew it. Okay, so that penguin right there is you. Uh, <laughs> And that other penguin next to you is me. So, <laughs> so this is how it can feel to work in enterprise UX sometimes, OK? It is uh, seemingly glacial complexity, right? I mean, it's, it's huge. It's enormous. A lot of times, these systems are very difficult to change. They're very slow. Well, I'm here to tell you today that I think we can help uh, climb that glacier. We can. Uh, reform, we can even maybe melt it. So I think that all of us here kind of understand what enterprise UX is, but I just wanted to be ultra clear, so I did a quick definition of terms here, and that is uh, up on the screen. I'm not going to read it to you, but the focus is, is that it's internal tools, typically, right, and that's used more for employees. So it's not necessarily uh, consumer software per se. Um, these are things like HR portals, right? Um, corporate internet sites, you know, uh, account management software, these types of things. People have to use them, and in fact, a lot of people use them, but they're usually by internal uh, employees, internal systems. So let's do a little bit of free association. I kind of gave you a little lead off there. Um, so when I say designing awesome experiences for an HR portal, what do you think? <laughs> Laughter, right? What else? <laughs> what was it? Not possible. Not possible. <laughs> okay, good. Anybody else? Boring. Boring. Boring, yes. Anybody else? Target rich environment. Target rich environment. I love it. Optimist, <laughs> optimist. Legacy systems. Legacy systems. Excellent. Okay. So, yes, all good answers, all true, right? So, there is de there's definitely um, a lot of opportunity. In, uh, in, these, in these systems. Um, and it sounds, frankly, sometimes when you hear some of those words, it can sound pretty bad, even with the occasional optimist comment. It can sound pretty, can sound pretty rough. But I'm here to tell you today that there's hope. So we, can, we as UX professionals, can, can change this. We can improve this. So this is why Enterprise UX needs you is because of these complex challenges, because of all these things that are difficult to use, because of these legacy systems written in old um, you know, Jurassic period code. Um, this, is what, this is what we need. We need people like us who think about problems in a different way to be able to come in and sort of influence that space. Um, by the way, in case anybody caught that, um, uh, the free association wasn't uh, coined by Rorschach. It was Freud, right? But the Rorschach slide was way funnier. So, so I had to stick with that because it was, I was like, psychology close enough. Um, and I didn't, want to I didn't want to talk about my mother. So, um, <laughs> so as we, had, we heard another uh, speaker talk about earlier, um, there is actually a tremendous amount of complexity. And this isn't just in enterprise UX. This is in UX in general, right? Um, this is what we kind of geek out on as, as UX professionals. 
Um, but in order to really, in order to really uh, I guess, derive the simple, distill the simple down, you really need to dive into that complexity, which is um, not always a ton of fun, but frankly, it's, it's needed. And, and the quicker we can get people involved in that, in that process, the better. Um, so I'm also here to tell you that the good news is the glass is half full, right? Does anybody, everybody like that graphic? I thought it was cool. <laughs> So the glass is half full. So I, I do tend to be an optimist, self-admittedly. Self um, try to be a realist some of the times, but, but I am a, am, am an optimist. So I, feel, I do believe that we can change the world. Um, and so today we're going to talk about five reasons why, uh, why UX doesn't suck. Um, or another, maybe more positive way to say it is, is why working in enterprise UX can be rewarding um, for, for UX professionals. But before I do that, um, I have to do the obligatory NASCAR slide. So everybody kind of wants to know, like, why I'm up here, or like, why you know what what it is that you know your background is in that makes you, um, I don't know, become a speaker, take on this this uh, form of punishment. So um, in in my case, um, I'll just spend very briefly. Um, I was hired. I've been in this field for about 17 years. Um, so I worked. I started working at a company called Learning Byte International. Um, and to give you some idea of the, of the, the, the scope of that, um, when I, my very first job title was human user interface designer. Okay, so that's not, doesn't sound like super UX-y, does it? But that's how, that's how long it was that there was no such thing as UX, right? And so I think the joke was on our team was like, as opposed to what, like canine user interface designers? <laughs> Like I don't, we didn't really totally understand it, but we're like, yeah, we kind of understand that it comes from like the human user interaction thing, so, so we'll go with it. I think the UX field has come a long way since then. Back then, it was more about accessibility. It was more about um, sort of, sort of the, the lowest common denominator, just being able to get people to actually be able to view your site in, in some ways, right? Um, whereas I think now, the UX discipline has really exploded, and it's gotten more to almost like the unboxing experience, which is a much larger sort of scope for, for all of us. And I think that's really why we're all here. Um, I won't spend a lot of time talking about the other places I worked. I did a bunch of cool things, building uh, interfaces for, uh, you know, video, learning video games. Um, so everything from instructional kind of design type of work all the way to um, risk dashboards for like big retail um, uh, environments that, you know, use like, you know, heat maps to show like which store is going to get robbed the most and stuff like that. So, so lots of different applications and lots of different, uh, different um, appli uh, applications of those applications. So ways to use them, right? Uh, but right now I'm at Jamf Software and uh, I was looking for a little bit of a change. I've been there for about a year. Um, and so I was hired by Jamf to create a user experience discipline inside a engineering focused org. So we, they've been around for about 12 years, about 500 people, but they, are, they don't have, they didn't have any UX. All they had was a bunch of engineers building stuff, which was really great and it worked and it got them into a certain level of success, but they knew they were ready to go to the next level and so like, well, we need UX and so they brought in me and I, I started building a team. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But without further ado, I want to get to reason number one, why it's cool or fun or rewarding to work in enterprise UX. And reason number one is that the, you can have measurable impact on systems that uh, users typically hate. Okay, so we kind of just had a little bit of a show of hands there. People saying, you know, HR portal, not the most fun system to work in. You know, you're working in any kind of these old antiquated tools um, that are super convoluted. It's just, it's just not, uh, it's not any, on anybody's top of their list of, of fun things to do. So another way of saying that is that the bar is very low. So, and if anybody who's been anywhere near an enterprise system um, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Even, a, even incremental changes can really influence um, how much you can uh, make the user experience better. Oh, did I go the wrong way? Um, so uh, I like to equate the enterprise software uh, to the Louisiana purchase of the software world, right? So this, this is a little bit of American history for you, but so this basically um, re could represent all of the enterprise systems, let's say in the country or the world, right? It's not an exact science. But so this is, this is it, it's a lot of systems that are out there and they're largely untouched by UX professionals. 
They are largely unmapped, unexplored. Um, they might know that there's like a river over there somewhere, but there's not. But generally speaking, they're not. They're not well defined. And so this is where we come in, right? This is where we can get in there and as adventurers, as uh, UX professionals, can get in and really help to define that space for people. So measurable impact. Um, can you say read that? Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, so one of the things that is impressive about this, I think, is in terms of if you really want to, if you're looking at a user, uh, as a UX person and you say, well, I really wanna, I wanna make my, you know, lives, the lives of my users more easier or more simple. Um, you know, there's not, there's not too many more target-rich environments than, than uh, enterprise UX. I mean, the quantity of users that use these systems is absolutely astonishing. I mean, we're talking like, so for example, at Jam Software, I mean, we have millions of customers, and we're not talking about customers that go in there for five minutes to change something or change a setting, right? We're talking about people that potentially use this system for maybe hours a day when they're, get, when they're getting ready to like ramp out a system or roll, you know, roll something out. We're talking maybe, I don't know, two days a week, let's say they, they use to set up all their new software. Um, if you can cut off you know, 30 seconds off a, off a task that you know, used to take, I don't know, 45, or a minute, whatever, um, you, you made a big difference in that person's life. I mean, now that person has a lunch break, right? I mean, this is more time with their kids. I mean, this is a big deal. And this is, this is what a lot of um, the focus of, re of redesigning Enterprise UX is about, to me. I'm very passionate about this, as you can tell. Um, so another reason why the bar is low or that it's easy to create measurable impact, in my humble opinion, is that the, right now, um, there is a, most of these systems, since they were built a long time ago, um, they're essentially uh, interfaces that mirror the back end system objects of that particular software. So uh, this is something that is, um, maybe makes sense to other engineers when they look at like how they, how they would organize the database and the data tables. But for the average user who has no conceptual model of what those, of where that data lives, frankly, they don't really care. And so what we can do is help make tasks um, we can help make the system uh, reflect their tasks, right? Not what the system is trying to do behind the scene. Um, in these large organizations, or large, uh, they're not necessarily large organizations, but large products, um, they start sm uh, it's good to start small and aim big. So a lot of times, this is like trying to turn a barge on the Mississippi, okay? So these systems are so big, like think of something like SAP or, or, or I don't know, pick your favorite you know, or least favorite, um, <laughs> enterprise, enterprise software product. Um, if you see the turn coming, you gotta start turning the barge, you know, a mile down the river in order to, in order to make that turn, right? Um, so you're not necessarily gonna be able to overhaul this system overnight, but um, you can start small and you can do, you can implement features that make sense that automatically can, um, you know, help, can improve people's lives for the better very quickly um, in a small way. And then you never lose sight of that end game which is the more of that you do, right, all the little things become big things. So if you start to, if you start to repaint the house, uh, and maybe that's a bad analogy because it's just paint, maybe if you start to you know, rebuild, refurnish the house, redecorate the house, um, you can eventually end up with a much better product, and that means more customers and more money, which is why we're ultimately all here, even though sometimes it's easy to get lost in the design world. Um, reason number two why it is rewarding to work in enterprise UX is healthy budgets. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now, um, there's a huge investment going on in design. Um, and at, I, I, there's, there's a lot of talk online, there's a lot of, lot of um, discussion about this right now. And there's some really big dogs that are coming to the table that are really doubling down on design. So for example, um, at San Antonio you know, Enterprise UX, IBM got up there and they talked about, I mean, they are literally doubling down on, bring, on bringing design thinking into an engineering-centered organization. This is huge, because IBM, I mean, think about IBM, what do you think about? I mean, that's, that's could there be a more engineer-focused organization? I, I can't think of one. So they're doing it, uh, GE is doing it, I know Dewill was out there. I just left GE, but yeah, GE is there. Um, there's a few other places that are that are investing a lot of money into this. Um, there, one of the reasons for this is that there is less tolerance for bad design, and why is that? Right? Because there's like the widening gap that we can see between your slick, you know, phones. We're talking about the 
the material language of Google, right? Beautiful, slick, delicious, right? You, you have users using their phones and their tablets and all, and all their devices outside of, the, of their work environment, um, and they have this sort of level of expectation of design. They come into work, and they have to use this thing that was built in like 1978, you know, and, and, and it's just a bunch of duct tape and bailing wire put together over the top of this system. And it's just very difficult. And so what's happening is users are getting less tolerant of that. And they're starting to get crabby, right? So this is, again, where we come in. This is where we can help. It's because, um, because the bars are so low, uh, we can get in there and, uh, and make their lives better. Um, so what does it cost? That is the million dollar question, quite literally. Nobody actually knows. And this is what I think is actually cool about, being, about getting into this field right now, is that as a UX professional, uh, moving into an organization that is starting to get the joke about, about design thinking, um, you have an opportunity to influence those budgets, which is super cool. Because, you, because in the past, um, you had somebody who didn't really know anything about design saying, oh, we'll just you know, hire, a few, hire a few designers over here. Um, if you can start to influence the, the organization, you can actually start to influence those budgets, which I think is super exciting. Uh, and I can tell you, at least in my humble experience, it, has, it does work. Um, we are actually getting to influence, and I can talk more about that in, at the end in terms of what my team is doing right now. Um, reason number three why it's rewarding uh, to work in Enterprise UX, or at least why it doesn't suck, is that there's really no prescribed method. So if anybody has ever worked in a large, um, a large organization or even a smaller organization that maybe has super, super tight processes around how they develop things, um, it can be a little bit... Um, restrictive, right? It can be a little bit, um, I don't know, kind of choke the life out of creativity, out of innovation, right? Um, so because a lot of these organizations, ha they have newer design sort of uh, groups, if you will, they're kind of growing up with, with the organization, um, it can really be very refreshing to come in there and actually have some influence. So instead of driving that big barge on the Mississippi, you might get a chance to drive the speedboat, you know, which is, it can be much more fun. Um, even though you might still have to work with the barge later, but we'll talk about that more. Um, you can also try new things pretty simply, pretty effectively, um, and because you're growing up with the org, not a lot of people know what to expect, and that works to your advantage because every org is different. You can, try, you can rifle through a bunch of different approaches, and uh, one might work, one might not. But because their agile development process is, is, is kind of in the same game, right? They're still working on that and defining that and making that better. Um, it's OK to be iterative and, and to keep working on, working on uh, <coughs> pardon me, working on your, your, your technique. Um, so reason number four is that you have more to offer than you think to these organizations. So as, as a leader, now, you don't have to become the, the Mr. Burns tyrannical leader, right? You can, you can pick another tyrannical leader if you want. But, but, the, <laughs> but you can be a leader. You have a lot to offer. Um, and the, the, really, the, the, the meat behind this is that corporate America is losing ground. So in terms of how we design product in this country, um, especially in large organizations, um, we're just really not able to keep pace. Um, so we saw these, um, what were they called again? The little bots again? The me bots? The, Meeper bots, thank you. Sorry, I forgot that, Ms. Meeper. Um, <laughs> so that Meeper bots, right? They, that's a great example of how business is changing in this country. St small startups are able to come in and just jam something out um, much faster than a large organization. And so it's, it's, it's having an impact on, on how, uh, how corporate America is actually starting to do business and how they even think about design. Well, did I lose that? Um, so if you, if you said that the, the, the sickness of corporate America is that there's too much process and that there's too much um, stifling um, you know, red tape and bureaucracy, then you could say that the antidote to that is design thinking. So by instilling what you do every day, right, how we process uh, information, how we process problems, the way we come up with different solutions, all those different things, being able to be quick on our feet and being able to say, oh, okay, well, I hear what you're saying there, but I'm going to do this instead, and being able to be flexible and still kind of please all your stakeholders, all, all of that great stuff. 
Um, that is less common than, than we all think, I think. <laughs> so being able to do that is extremely valuable in, in corporate right now or in working in enterprise UX. Um, you might even go so far as to say this is pretty bold, but that UX is the new business of this country, May maybe even the world, but I would say definitely this country. So um, really, right now, like we don't build widgets anymore in this country, right? That was the Industrial Revolution. We figured that out. We got that down. We had a, you know, a bunch of great MBAs teach us how to squeeze every last second out of that assembly line, right? But that's not really our thing anymore. Now we're, now we're into um, designing product, designing pro a, a better products for the, for the world. And um, this is, I would argue, the new business of, of America. So you can get into it at the ground floor, so to speak. Um, reason number five is you can make your mark. So this is a great opportunity because the, the field is wide open. So the UX is, bl is blooming in general, right? But I think one of the places it's uh, maybe blooming less <laughs> or needs to bloom more is in this enterprise space. Um, and because of that, um, it's really, they're really hungry for, 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 des uh, for good design, for good design thinking. Um, and you can do that. You can make your mark. Um, so this is, uh, I like to be dramatic. So joining the revolution, right? So let's join the revolution of overthrowing or changing enterprise software um, in this country and in this world. Um, it's, a, it's a worthwhile cause. Um, is it a huge challenge? Yeah, it is, right? There's gonna be all those things that we brought up. There's gonna be, there's gonna be uh, you're gonna have bad days, right? There's gonna be problems. There's gonna be, you're gonna reach some of that red tape in certain organizations. It's not gonna all be sunshine and roses. But I would say, in my experience, it's, it's worth the pain. It is worth the, because frankly, in UX in general, you're gonna have those fights anyway, right? So why not have the fights at a, at a level that is gonna impact a product, um, I would say, more so than, than maybe a, a, a happy, shiny, vanilla, sort of candy site, as I like to call them. Um, so uh, I guess the last thing I would say about, about that is, what do you have to lose? I mean, really, brochureware, um, super sexy, super slicky commerce sites, those are always gonna be there, right? I mean, there's no, there's no that's not gonna go away. You can always go back. You can always you know, try it out. Uh, you don't love it, go back and do that other thing, that's fine. But I would say that um, this is sort of the graduate coursework of UX professionals. Yes, I know that sounds a little bit uppity, but I really truly believe that if you're ready to make the jump to the next level in terms of really digging into the complexity, in terms of really getting your hands dirty, in terms of really fighting the battles that need to be fought for the user, and, and oftentimes these users don't get to vote, right? Um, when you download a copy of Aksher, you don't like it, you don't buy it, right? What about the HR generalist? They go into a new job and they start using some horribly antiquated system they need this cheat sheet to figure out what do they do <laughs> you know you can be the voice for, for those people so this is a call to arms for all of us so i thought next i would talk a little bit about um kind of the, some of the things that we're doing on our team so that so i just gave you kind of a lot of information um a lot of the kind of the ways you know we see the world in terms of how, how things are changing and what, what's gonna happen with enterprise UX or, or the, I don't know, sort of growing pains that we're in right now and why it can be rewarding. So I thought we could talk now a little bit about just personal experience. Um, I thought this might be useful uh, for people. So what does that actually look like? Like put some meat on the bone, right? What does it actually mean to, to work in enterprise UX? So uh, for me right now um, and our team, I was hired as the uh, the lead of user experience, and I had one person under me at first, and this is about a year ago. Now we have four people. So it's, we're still not as big as we wanna be, but we're getting there, right? We're growing, um, and that's important. Um, we, have, we have come to the uh, sort of acceptance point, if you will, that we are, one of our major functions in this organization, yes, it's to be great designers, yes, it's to, be, to create great mock-ups and great deliverables and communicate with developers and all those wonderful things that, that people in UX do, but it's also to be change agents. So we've, and this took a while actually, this was one of those learning processes where we're like, well, what are we doing again? So yeah, okay, we're here to change the way that organization thinks about how they build products. This is not a small thing. 
So it's gonna take time. And so one of the things that, that we've also kind of come to terms with is that we're buying time. And so right now, we know that um, we cannot turn that barge, you know, if you will, or that big product, we cannot do a reskin of it, right? We can't just say, oh, let's turn the switch off, let's have it point to a different IP for a day, come back and we'll have this thing be beautiful and redone. It doesn't work like that. When you have huge enterprise products that are deeply embedded inside organizations, um, that, that kind of flexibility just isn't possible. So what we're doing is we're kind of doing, by, by buying time, we're there and just talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. Uh, we're kind of representing the, the UX sort of design mind frame, right? Um, there's two ways we're doing that primarily. There's sort of two uh, games, if you will. We have our short game, which is that means when a new feature comes on the pike, right, and the product owners say, we need to implement this new feature uh, because we had requests for it or whoever they, wherever they got their data from, right? We need to implement this. Okay, we can do that. So we'll make that feature make sense to the user, right? So our product currently right now, like I'm not gonna lie, we're like a Victorian house, you know? There's like a lot of decoration, probably a lot, maybe a little bit unnecessary, not super clear where the rooms are. You walk in, like, why is the bathroom right there? Like, don't know. Um, but if you can make even one bedroom in that house make just a little bit more sense to the user, Make, a little, make it a feel right, make it a little bit better, you can, you can uh, you know, quote unquote, change their life. And uh, so that's our short game, is to do incremental gains. Um, and, and that's uh, something we're working on. The other thing we're working on is the long game. So our long game is actually to uh, completely overhaul the entire product. So as we're working on these little things and making incremental changes that we do run into constraints with because of the current system, we also have in the back of our mind what we're really here to do is completely revamp the entire product. And this takes time, right? So we're building the master plan, we're doing the information architecture, we're doing all the, we're doing all the, all the user research, we're doing every, everything. It's sort of like a, it's almost like a dream UX project in a way because you're getting to sort of reinvent this entire huge complex product that would just make your brain hurt. Um, some of us really geek out on that, so if you're one of those people, it might be a good place for you. Um, so that's what we're doing, and we're keeping that in mind. So we're probably talking about, you know, we're, we're, we might be nine months out from that, right? So it's, it's not a short-term thing, um, but we're working on it. And this is more of a victory that I'm going to share with you, right? So this is, this is something that I'm really happy to be able to say, is that we are making a difference, right, in, on our team. And we've, uh, I've been there, let's say, about a year. Um, we're moving into a new space because we're a booming company. Um, by the way, any, any front-end devs or, or UX people, we are looking, um, always. Um, and so what we're doing by moving into a, a new space to accommodate all our growth um, is we actually are gonna build a UX lab. How freaking cool is that, right? So if we weren't making a difference, we wouldn't be doing this, right? I mean, there's no way. So I like to think that this is a sign of our success, you know? Um, I like to think that we, you know, maybe it was right place, right time, but I like to think it's that we're doing something right. Um, so we're gonna have the whole spiel. We're gonna have the, you know, the observation area for the POs to come in and watch our, uh, our, our user experience, uh, you know, experiments with our, uh, with our users, um, we're going to watch. You have them watch U Labs. We're having all the getting all the you know fancy equipment. So super super excited about that. Be able to do our in-house research, um, and so that's that's a that's a victory that I can share with you guys. So that was a lot of words. That was a lot of talking by me. Um, I wanted to leave at least a couple minutes. Looks like I have a little bit for a couple of questions, um, really quickly. Um, if you're interested in passing this information on, or you want to learn more about it, I actually just wrote an article. Um, that kind of is a, a sort of a longer version of the talk I just gave. It's on UX Booth. Um, so if, you, if anybody does UX Booth, you can go to UX Booth, and it's called The Five Reasons Why It Doesn't Suck to Work in Enterprise UX. Um, you can also contact me at, uh, this, my, at my email address down there. I'll make sure this gets posted somewhere. Not much of a tweeter, so just use one of those, um, and we can, uh, we can engage in a dialogue. I'm definitely happy to take any questions. Have you ever had to deal with a situation where your user contingent is afraid of change? <laughs> yes, every day. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, you're absolutely 100%, 100% right. I mean, that, that happens all the time because you're constantly balancing 
what users, they may not necessarily think it's the greatest thing in the world, but they know it. And so what they know is better, right? That's just kind of like a human thing. So, so we're a change agent for our users as well. What we've found though is as we roll out incremental changes is that, and as we kind of, even when we talk to our expert users, if, if the change makes sense, right? So if you take a convoluted workflow, even though they know how to do it like in, you know, in their sleep, you take it and you simplify that and you make it easier and you make it more understandable um, and you cut some time off it, cut some clicks off of it, and you test that same, you know, those same users and say, what do you think, what if we did it like this? And they walk through it and they do, and they do the clicks. They get it. And because the learnability factor is, is low, meaning they learn it quickly, um, they're, they're okay with it. So, so, so far, we've, we've been lucky. We've been fortunate that we, our users are, are, I think, willing to, take, uh, to make the investment with us um, because they don't, nobody's really super in love with our interface. Good question. Yeah, uh, so I've been systematically replacing an SAP implementation because half of the company hates it. Um, but there's a contingent of people who still like it. Yeah. And um, trying to get these two groups to talk to each other and compromise is incredibly difficult. Yeah. And trying to get them to agree on a change. So we've actually been kind of incrementally patching systems on top of systems so yeah. that everybody gets what they want. Yeah. So do you have any advice on how to like, uh, merge the rift, like get over the hump and get these two groups to, you know, see each other's plight. Yeah. So the problem space is you have, you have um, some some developers slash stakeholders that basically think, well, it's not really that broken, yeah. so why fix it really? Because we're making money and things are seem to be going kind of okay. Um, versus the people that are saying, yeah, it could be a lot better, and how to get those how to how to get those people together. Um, there's no, there's no silver bullet. I mean, my experience. I mean, I would say what what we're doing is, um, you know, by just kind of investing in those in those people in those groups. If you want to call them the, we call them the honey badgers sometimes. So, the, <laughs> so the people that are like kind of like, in my in my vernacular, unreasonably against change. So we kind of just try to work with them. You know, one on one as teams. We 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 stay highly visible. And we just demonstrate our value constantly. So, and it, and it can be really little things. You know, we invite them to our studies. We we show them all of our reports. Um, we we and we just talk <laughs> a lot with them as they're developing the product. Um, I will say that that does take time, but it, I, I've seen it work. I've seen it help. So we're we're, we're making strides um, with some of that. So, good question. We good? Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.